Here's how to build your own F1 style sequential shift light, all for under $20. And while I'm making this for my Mazda track car, this build guide will work for any car. If you're like me and you wake up each morning wishing you were a Formula 1 driver, then you may also dream of having a cool sequential shift light like on the F1 driver's steering wheel. So in this video, I'll show you step by step how to build one for yourself. I'm going to mount my sequential shift light to my DIY built carbon fiber steering wheel. If you want to see how I made the wheel, please see the video on my other channel, Beavis Motorsport, link is in the description. I'll run you through each component to make it all work and a breakdown of the circuit that we need to build. I'll show you how to modify the configuration to suit your car or preferences, and then we'll upload the code to the Arduino. I've got links to all the components, a breakdown of the circuit design, Arduino code, the 3D model, and a full parts list, all available in the description. While I'm not an electronics expert myself, you'll probably want a basic grasp of electronics, but really, anyone can build this with some patience and practice. I will also shout out some useful resources that I took inspiration from, PyroMonkey on Reddit and Mick the Mechanic on GitHub, who both made similar shift lights and so thanks to them for sharing their efforts. Enough talking, let's get building. Normally at this point I tell you about all of the components required to make this, but I think it'll all make more sense if we first talk about the electrical circuit that makes this all go burr. So the circuit. In effect, this is what we need to build to take our RPM signal from the car and make the LED lights illuminate in sequence depending on how fast the engine is spinning. This can effectively be broken up into four main sections. The car itself, the voltage conversion circuit, the Arduino, and the LEDs. You will see there are breaks in the wires between the voltage conversion and the inputs to the Arduino. That's just to make it fit better on the screen. In essence, the wires out of the top right hook up to those feeding into the bottom left. So for the car side, we need a 12 volt source, a ground, and our RPM signal. For my MX-5, that RPM signal is available from the back of the gauge cluster. In fact, so too are the other 12 volt and ground. But also you'll need to find a diagram for your car or search online to see if anyone else has a source. You may also find you can take a signal from a coil, distributor, igniter, or a wire at the ECU to get that RPM signal. Next is the voltage conversion circuit. This is broken into two main components. Firstly, because we're using an Arduino to run the LEDs, it requires a five volt source and it will not handle the 12 volts that the car runs at. So we use a voltage regulator to step this down. Secondly, and similarly, we need to alter the RPM signal. Because for the MX-5, that is a 12 volt pulse. In this case, we use a transistor with some resistors as a form of voltage divider to step down the voltage, but retain the pulse signal. As I'm hardly an electronics whiz, I've leveraged the experience and design of Mick the Mechanic on GitHub for this circuit, so please check the link in the description if you'd like to see how he did it. Now onto the Arduino. For this, there isn't too much to do. First, obviously, we need the board itself. I'm using an Arduino Pro Micro because I have a few of them spare from building sim racing shifters and steering wheels with the joystick library. But almost any Arduino will do the job. Then we have our wires coming into the Arduino. Again, the 5 volt power, the ground, and of course the RPM signal. Then there's the output from the Arduino, our LED data signal. This output includes a resistor of somewhere between about 300 and 500 ohms. Why, you ask? I don't exactly know. I've seen suggestions that it helps prevent voltage spikes or limits the current into the pin or prevents powering the LED through the data pin. But in any case, it's suggested to run this resistor as best practice when using the NeoPixels library and the WS2812 LEDs as we are here. And speaking of, lastly, we have our LEDs, which in our case are WS2812 5050 LEDs on a PCB. What does that all mean, you ask? 
Well, WS2812 is an intelligent control or addressable RGB LED. This means we can change the colors of each LED and we can tell each individual LED when to turn on and what color to be. I like them on this pre-made PCB as a strip of eight because it's an ideal size and length for our sequential shift light. This PCB has pads on the back for the three wires it needs to operate. Similar to the Arduino, it requires a five volt power, a ground, and the data signal out of the Arduino. And that is our overview of the circuit. Now onto the components required. First of all, the Arduino. I'm using a Pro Micro, but any Arduino compatible boards will work, an Uno, a Nano, etc. You'll need a prototype PCB. I've used one that was around 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters, something to solder all of your components to. We'll need a five volt regulator, number 7805, to step down the car's 12 volts to power our Arduino and LEDs. And as this regulator can get quite warm, an appropriately sized heatsink is required. Number V4330N is a suggestion. We'll also need a 1000 microfarad capacitor from the regulator to ground, this mitigates voltage spikes. For our voltage divider, we're going to need a PNP transistor, number 2N3906, along with one 47K ohm resistor and one 10K ohm resistor. You'll need a resistor in the range of 300 to 500 ohms for the data input to the LEDs. And of course, lastly, we need our LED strip with the WS2812 compatible chips. I'll have links to all these in the description. One additional thing you might consider, other than all the other tools we need, a breadboard is highly recommended for the circuit building phase, as it allows you to assemble, understand and test the circuit without the need to commit to soldering. Finally, to assemble, you want to have some solder, some wires, soldering iron and other obvious tools like wire cutters or similar. Now the Arduino needs to be programmed. We need to tell it that there's an RPM pulse coming in and tell it what RPMs we turn on our LEDs and what color we want the LEDs to be. To get started, first you'll need the Arduino IDE. This is available to download from their website, arduino.cc. Once installed, open it up and you'll need to ensure you have downloaded the NeoPixel library. Navigate to the sketch menu, select include library, then manage libraries, wait a few seconds for it to load, and then in the search field, enter NeoPixel, and again, give it a minute to think. You'll see there are many options available for download, but the one in particular that we want is Adafruit NeoPixel, as you see on the screen now. Select install, and you're done. Now open up the Arduino code I've provided. If you've never touched code before, and you've got no idea what you're looking at here, don't worry, you don't need to understand everything, but I'll do my best to describe what we're looking at here. At the top, we declare a whole heap of variables. This effectively allows us to, shall we say, configure how our LEDs will light up. Up the top, we have some inputs and outputs. These are the wires through which our RPM signal comes into the Arduino and RPM signal comes out. And we also define our length of our LED strip. If you weren't running the eight LEDs like I am, you could run more or less, you would need to alter this number. Next, we have some variables, but the two that are mo of most interest are the start and end RPM. This defines when the first of our LEDs will turn on and when the last of our LEDs will turn off, when we start flashing to shift up gear. So for this example, I've got the start RPM set to 1200 RPM. That means the first LED will turn on as soon as we hit 1200 RPM. And our end RPM is set to 6800. Above this, all of our lights will flash, blinking to indicate that we need to shift up. The other important integer here is the frequency multiplier. This might need to change depending on your vehicle. Effectively, it's related to RPM, which is revolutions per minute, versus a Hertz pulse, which is generally calculated in per second. Because a minute is a multiple of seconds by 60, you would think that this frequency multiplier should be 60. But in fact, because we, we get two pulses out of our RPM signal, we only multiply by 30. It's gonna depend on your car and how it works. 
the Mazda runs in a batch fire sequence, which means it's firing twice as frequently as you would think. So it's just the way the pulse works. For your car, if you've got different number of cylinders or your engine runs a little bit differently, you might find that this multiplier has to change. You'll have to work that out for yourself. An easy way to do this is just get it set up as is with your RPM numbers for start and end as something very low and very high, like zero and 10,000, and test it in the car and see how the, uh, the engine responds and the LEDs respond. You might need to adjust the frequency multiplier. It might end up being 60 for your car. A bit of trial and error may need to occur if you don't know exactly what that frequency is. We next have three colors defined. These are our start up color, shift up color, and off color. Startup color is the color the LEDs blink when the Arduino first powers on. Shift up color is the color that all of our LEDs will illuminate in a flashing sequence when we need to shift up. And the off color is the static color that our LEDs will illuminate when the engine is not running but the Arduino is powered on. You'll notice these are defined in what is called RGB, three integer values. If you don't know how to use RGB or what numbers mean what, I've got a link for a website that helps you visualize color and turns it into a number. If you want to change these colors, you just need to change the numbers here with a value between zero and 255. Next, we have an array of eight colors. These are the colors for each of our individual LEDs as we move up the rev range. So we need one array entry per LED and we can make these colors whatever we want. I've opted for the first four LEDs to be blue, the last four to be red. You can change these at your whim. You might want to make them all different colors, all the same color. I'll leave that up to you. Further down, we have the LED set point. This effectively calculates the RPM at which each LED turns on. You shouldn't need to change this unless you're running more or less LEDs than the eight that I've got here. Now we're into the setup function of the Arduino code. This doesn't do a whole lot, except for the one key thing, which is run the startup sequence when the Arduino first boots up. This, in essence, just blinks all the lights on, then blinks them all off again. It's mostly just to make it look pretty. After this, I've got a get RPM function. This is what reads our pulse input from the car and converts it or calculates it as an RPM signal. And lastly, we have our looping code. This repeatedly gets our RPM and then compares that RPM to the values we defined earlier. If our RPM is less than the off RPM, we know we're in a state where the car is not running and we just set our static purple color. If the engine RPMs are below the flash point, then we'll turn on our LEDs based off our array that we talked about earlier. Again, mine was set to four LEDs of blue, four LEDs of red. Obviously, we only turn on the number of LEDs that are within the range of the current RPM. And then lastly, if our RPM is greater than the end RPM, which we've configured at the moment as 6800, then all of our lights will flash on and off with a 50 millisecond delay between the on and off flash in our shift up color. And that's it. The code is as simple as that. Again, you can change this to your whim. Most importantly are the shift up and shift down and maybe the frequency up the top and perhaps the colors. But otherwise, hopefully the rest of it should work well for you. Now that you have a grasp of what's going on here, we need to burn this code to the Arduino. To do so, you'll need an appropriate USB cable to connect it to your PC. Once connected, ensure your Arduino COM port has been selected in the Tools Port menu. Now would also be a good time to check your selected board. This should match the Arduino model that you are using. Then it's simply a matter of clicking the upload button in the console window at the bottom of the screen. You should see it compile and then upload your code to the Arduino. Now I've included a few tools to make the maths around RPMs and RGB a little bit easier. For one, I've supplied an Excel spreadsheet to show the calculated TAC frequency and help you with the math on RPM spread across the LEDs. You can tweak your start and end RPM to get a visual understanding on when each LED will turn on. And secondly, as I mentioned earlier, I'll include a link to the RGB tool. This is handy to work out what RGB values you should use for a desired color. Okay, we have our components. We have our Arduino programmed. It's time to wire everything up per the circuit diagram. 
My process was to get the Arduino and the LEDs working first, as they can be done on the PC, powered directly via the USB port. And it also helps prove out that the code works. Then I built the rest of the circuit. As mentioned earlier, it's highly recommended to start with using a breadboard for that initial setup. To get all the components into place on the board, then you can use the breadboard jumper leads to connect the components. I then took it out to the car for that all important first test. For this initial test, I did so on my normal road going MX-5. Then with that a success, I soldered the components onto the Proto PCB, including the Arduino, and again tested it. And then lastly, with all the connectors in place, it was ready for that final test in the actual car. I'm not sure how better to help you or show you how to build the circuit, other than to say, follow the diagram on screen and just take your time and be patient. A couple of pointers though, for one, the voltage regulator, the transistor and the capacitor all have specific pin orientations that may not be obvious to newcomers. So please follow the diagrams on screen to ensure you get those connected up in the correct orientations. Obviously it's not ideal to have a loose circuit board lying around in the car. So for my use case, I designed two 3D printed cases. One to house the Arduino and its voltage circuits and one to house the LEDs. These were designed in Fusion 360. The circuit case is more or less just a cube-like shape with some holes for the wires to come in and out and a removable lid. Nothing too glamorous, I included an integrated connector on one side for the input from the car and a pigtail for the Deutsch plug to feed out to the LEDs. Secondly, as the LED lights are intended to mount to my carbon formula style steering wheel, this was all designed in one project. The LED strip mounts to the wheel itself, but I also have designed a flat bottom housing for the LEDs for you to download if you'd rather mount them somewhere more traditional. These, like most 3D prints, went through a few iterations before I was happy with the final shape. Then it's a matter of inserting the circuit into the case, securing everything down where it needs to go. The incoming connector has a recessed cutout for its locking nut, while for the pigtail to the Deutsch connector, I used a large cable tie to ensure some strain relief. The lid is secured with an M3 nut and bolt. The LED board is installed into its case, and we're ready to set this thing up for one final time. I found somewhere appropriate under the dash for the Arduino box to live, and our shift light comes to life. And with that, there's so many other cool things you could do. More elaborate startup sequences, make the lights do other things. If say, for example, you had sensors feeding into the Arduino, you could flash red if the coolant is overheating. You could have a button or a switch to turn the lights off or have a signal from your headlights to dim the shift light brightness at night. The ideas are endless. And you can make one too. The circuit design, Arduino code, 3D models, the parts list, it's all available to download for free. Links are in the description. Don't forget, if you want to see how I made the carbon fiber steering wheel to go with this setup, please see the video on my other channel. Again, link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Thank you.